Hi guys and welcome to another Automation Anywhere technical tutorial. Automation Anywhere has some really neat functions for working with data. Specifically, it can open an Excel spreadsheet and read the rows and columns from that spreadsheet. So if we look here, here's a, here's a simple Excel spreadsheet. Four rows, the first one a header, and then we've got rows for data products that were ordered, the quantity ordered, and the unit cost. Again, an Excel spreadsheet. And here is an XML document. Now, an XML document is a description of data which is typically exchanged between software applications. One application would write a document in XML and another application would consume that document in XML. All great. Now, the puzzle that I set for myself was could I turn an Excel spreadsheet into an XML document and what would be involved in it. So the goal was to take this Excel data and produce this XML document which is the same semantic content but a different representation. Here we see the individual orders, order for blue widget, order for red widget, order for green widget, and the quantity, unit cost, etc, etc. So my goal was to build an automation anywhere task which would take as input the Excel spreadsheet and produce an XML document. So I had a go at that, got it working, and now what I want to do is take you through what was involved in building this. So here is the final task that I created and what I want to do is I want to walk you through these 12 different uh, commands within the task as a whole so we can see how it works. Well the first task is called open a spreadsheet and what this task does is it opens a named spreadsheet. So I happen to have a spreadsheet called orders and it opens that spreadsheet. Now I flagged this open command to indicate that the spreadsheet contains a header line. So that means that when we go to read the data, the first row in the data, which is a header, will be ignored. So again, looking at the Excel spreadsheet, here's the first row, and we're going to ignore that and just concentrate on the data that follows. And that's what we get for flagging this box here. The second activity is called start an XML session. Now what start an XML session does is allows us to uh, start working with XML. It creates a in-memory data tree model that represents the document that we're going to be working against. And uh, I decided to parse a document that contains nothing but this orders root tag so that we can create a XML document which is bracketed by orders. Now I could have created an empty document and added an orders child but this is just as easy. We'll start by working with XML by parsing this hard-coded XML document. The next command that we're going to run is called Excel get all the cells. Now get, it, get, get all cells, this is the flag that we checked here no other parameters need to be set other than that. What that does is it parses all the cells in my current worksheet in my current Excel document. And since we said ignore the header, the parsed rows will be 2, 3 and 4 with columns A, B and C. So having retrieved the cells from the data, we now start performing a loop over each row in the Excel spreadsheet. The loop command, we start a loop command and we say each row in an Excel spreadsheet. So this requires that we have previously retrieved the data from the spreadsheet, and that's what we did here, and now we can iterate through each of the rows. Now for every row in the spreadsheet, what we want to do is we want to create a child node of orders called order. So if we look at our XML again, we want to, for every row in the uh, Excel spreadsheet, we want to create a child of orders called order. And this is how we do it. We use the XML command 
insert node subcommand. We say that the root we're working with is orders and we're going to insert a new child called order and we're going to insert it at the end of the existing orders. Okay, so we've now got a orders order and now we want to create the three fields subordinate to this individual order which contain the data retrieved from the Excel spreadsheet. So what we do in this case is we use a little bit of XPath expression. So let's look at this again. So we've added orders order and now we add as the last uh, uh, we find the the order element that's the last order in our data and we add a node to that called type and we set it to be the value of the first column in the Excel data. Again, the first column of the Excel data is product, then quantity, then unit cost or type, quantity, unit cost. So we, t uh, we, we, we create a node called type, we set it to the first one, the first column. Then we repeat that for each of the other columns in the Excel spreadsheet. So for column number two in the spreadsheet, we set that to be the quantity field uh, or the quantity element and the unit cost element is column number three. When we've looped round each of the rows in our Excel data, we will now have created a XML data tree in memory. So what we want to do is we want to save the XML data which is in memory and we want to write it into a file. I chose this sample file. And now it's nothing but cleanup. So we've written the file, we want to close our XML session and then we finally want to close the spreadsheet and since we didn't make, it, make any changes to it, don't even try to save it. And that's it. So let's go back to our spreadsheet. Let's add, for example, a new row. We will call this yellow widget. And we'll have a quantity of 11 at uh, 7.1 each. Great, so we've added a new row. I've saved my spreadsheet. And now if I go back and run this task, the task is now running. And it's running and it's running and it's running opens the spreadsheet, does its work, we're all done. Now if we go and reopen my newly created Excel uh, XML document, not the one that we've already got open, but this new one, we will find, if all has gone well, we now have an extra record in my data. And that's it. So it's, uh, well, is it complicated? That's a question. That's a good philosophical question. Um, you need to be a programmer. I am not going to suggest that a business person works with XPath data or variables like Excel column, etc., etc. But uh, this is a, quite a specialized recipe. In this recipe, we worked with Excel data and we wanted to create um, an XML document. Now, what have we illustrated in here? A couple of things. First of all, we've illustrated how to work with Excel data, how to get the data out of an Excel spreadsheet. But uh, in my opinion, more important than that, we've demonstrated how we can externalize from Automation Anywhere a data structure in the form of, in this case, an XML document, which can be written to disk. Now, why might that be useful? Well, if we can imagine the output of one task perhaps being a subsequent input to another task, then having the first task write state data as an XML document and having the second task consume that state data from an XML document, that's got possibilities. That could be applicable in a variety of different circumstances. And if nothing else, you get to see some, some different tastes, some different styles, some different ways of working with automation anywhere. I hope you found this useful. I look forward to more of these videos to come, folks. Bye for now.